This is Agnes Shanley at Interfex 2012 in New York City, and I'm with Chris Amstutz of Emerson Process Management. Chris, uh, what trends are you seeing in the way industry is adopting uh, PAT and QBD? Have they changed? Uh, you know, has the nature of these uh, programs kind of changed within the typical pharma customer that you have? Yes, th thank you, Agnes. Yeah, we're seeing a definite change in, our, in the industry, especially over the last 18 months. I think uh, a, a lot of customers that we've been talking to have gone from the tire kicking phase, right, to the actual implementation phase. We're actually seeing some customers that are actually making it a full-blown program now. So they're actually, uh, one in particular, they call it robustness. It's uh, basically the way that it fits into the overall scheme from process development to, to tech transfer to full-scale production and to actually rolling it back into process development and down the road. So again, we're seeing a nice adoption of that type of technology now, which is uh, we're glad to see, quite honestly. The other thing that we're also seeing is that as they, as they bring PAT and QBD into production, what does that mean? How do we actually do that, right? Because um, most of those systems were designed for the R&D environment. And now we have to bring them into production. In a production environment, you have robustness issues, high availability. You know what happens when the, the process doesn't work, right? Which sometimes we see. So that that's been one of our big challenges, and we've actually been able to bring PAT methods directly into our recipes and sequence it directly in, which again takes care of some of those robustness issues that we've heard from the industry. Are you uh, seeing increased interest in uh, MES uh, within pharma? Another great question, absolutely, um, especially in the, uh, I call it the Western world, right? I'd say over the last, again, 18 to 24 months, we've seen a lot more uh, spend, we've seen a lot more clients embracing it. Um, you know, MES has gone through these cycles over the years, and it's actually gotten to the point now where it's, it's part of the overall data management strategy. So we're really good at collecting the data, right? And MES is actually really good at that. And now it's what do we do with all that data. So we're actually seeing the MES systems becoming the uh, facilitator to actually extend more into the data management space uh, and, and aggregation of data. Yeah. Uh, without mentioning any names, can you talk about some of the, uh, the projects that you're working on with, uh, with pharma clients? Yeah, let's see, without mentioning names. Uh, just actually finished up phase one of a, a project with a large generics manufacturer uh, on the secondary side. Uh, around PAT where they had some issues around um, dryness, actual dryness. They had a lot of uh, batches they ran, thousands of batches a year, and uh, through a real simple application of PAT, we were able to identify some uh, high return on investment areas through very simple, and simple implementations of PAT into those processes to, to improve that. Now, what happens with an existing process, right, and there's licensing issues, and it turned out that licensing issues were actually pretty easy because they were able to do a, a blanket license update to everything at one time. So that, that actually resulted in about one small study we did, we, we found $2 million in savings at one facility just by applying PAT to dryers, for instance, on the secondary side. So a nice little project there and a nice return for the customer. Are you seeing, in general, more interest from generics uh, manufacturers in process control issues and you know, PAT and QBD methodologies? Yeah, um, I would say in the, uh, in the more developed markets. Um, PAT, QBD, uh, a lot of people like to talk about it let's say in the generics in, in Asia Pacific, but uh, we see very few people actually taking it to action. Right Now where you do see it coming into action is, in that particular company I was just referring to, their US based operations are putting PAT in. So we think it's just a matter of, of time before it maybe ends up in Asia. But um, along those lines, uh, one of the things that we're seeing is, especially in China, they're going from a low cost producer to more of a quality producer. So I think we're going to see some big trends in the next maybe five to ten years. And I think this is part of one of their five-year plans is to, is to, again, increase quality, right, which actually is going to put pressure on the Western companies, right, which have already incorporated a lot of these productivity enhancements, right. Now it's actually going to be moving to Asia and it's going to kind of level the playing field and we'll have to do something on this side of the pond, right, to, to compensate for that. Well, thank you so much. Sure. Thank you, Agnes. Thank you.